Now, Joe Biden, sexual assault accuser Tara Reid, said early this week that she had moved to Russia and was seeking citizenship there. This is according to Sputnik, a Russian government-run news site. Let's take a look. Uh, the attacks will continue. I only know that when I got off the plane in Moscow for the first time in a very long time, I felt safe and I felt heard and I felt respected. And that has not happened in my own country. I did talk to U.S. Congressman Matt Gates. I have not concealed anything. I told him I was in Moscow, Russia, and I told him why. And he said something very stunning. I am considered a whistleblower, as you know, in the United States. One of the cases I will be testifying is about how the DOJ and the FBI has weaponized by the Biden administration against its own citizens. So he said, Tara, you know, I'm worried about your physical safety. Now, the media reaction to this, I think, has been somewhat outsized to what is actually happening here. Tara Reid saying that she feels less safe in the United States, where, of course, the political implications of her raising her claim at the time that she did meant that she was very much treated differently, I would say, by the mainstream media, who did not seem to have any interest in weighing the credibility of her concerns the way they had with, for example, Christine Blasey Ford, who had accused Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault when they were students together. Um, there, of course, nobody knows what happened in any of these instances except for the people there. But what we do know definitively is that the media treatment and interest in actually investigating and following up on some corroborated evidence that Tara Reid had yeah, it was, was nil. grossly different. And uh, frankly, making this even more disgusting, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, I, I've gotten personal messages that are off the record, so I won't share the people behind them, but people in mainstream media saying, oh, look at you, yeah, how do you feel now? You took this more seriously than I did, uh, but she's a Russian student, she's moving to Russia, so you must feel pretty stupid for even writing about this and covering, and, and to be clear, I only said we should apply a standard evenly across the board. Right. I personally, I, I did not vote for Joe Biden because I'm not a Democrat and I don't support his policies. Same. And if I had been <laughs> inclined to vote for him, I frankly don't think a many decades old accusation, barring extremely compelling evidence that is very likely to have happened would have changed my mind. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I would have, and I felt the same way about the Kavanaugh confirmation mm -hmm. and a lot of Me Too uh, instances. It was uh, liberal activists who took the position that you should automatically believe accusers rather than just treat with them with respect and dignity, which is what I think you should do, and which put Democrats in, and Joe Biden himself, who agreed with that standard, in a totally unsustainable uh, situation, given that he had faced accusations not just from her, but from other people, hers being uh, the most serious. Look, that she has subsequently, you know, even if, let, let's say you think the sub, these subsequent actions, this you know, posture toward Russia is, uh, is, is, not, is not wise or is a little too, I, I, I don't know, Countenance, counting of, of Russia's bad behavior, let's say sure. you think that. I don't think that th that changes the underlying accusation whatsoever. And in fact, it could be that someone who made an accusation and then was not taken seriously was gaslit by a mainstream media that was eager to dig into every single Me Too instance of anyone on the planet except hers, yeah. maybe got a little paranoid and a little conspiratorial yeah. and went down some rabbit hole of some thinking the world is against her because of that behavior. Also, that would not be surprising it, at all. I don't know that we can even call it paranoia when the, the media was very yeah. much against her. Listen, listen to this from contemporary coverage of this news story in the New York Times. The New York Times writes, in interviews with the New York Times in April of 2020, no former Biden staff members could corroborate any details of Ms. Reed's allegation. No <laughs> former Biden staff members could corroborate. Let's recall, because we should talk about it here, because at the time, the yeah. media had no interest in talking about all of the corroborating evidence, which frankly, I don't, again, I don't know what happened. No other wolves but, could corroborate but, what happened to the three little pigs. Right. But I, I don't know available. what happened, but I do know that there was more corroborating evidence in the Tara Reid case than there was in the Christine Blasey yes. Ford case. Starting with the fact that she contemporaneously told her brother and a close friend of the assault when it happened. She also told her mother, who has dece is deceased. However, her mother made a call 
to Larry King Live. I remember. Talking about the assault, which somebody, when, when Tara Reid raised that in an interview, I think, with Katie Halper, someone dug it up, and now we have the video of Tara Reid's mom talking about her corroborating well before, like this is in the 90s, corroborating Tara Reid's account. Okay, this was in, in, in um, the event probably, or maybe it was in the early aughts, but the event happened no, no, sorry. It happened in 1993. Mm -hmm. though the call to Larry King Night Live happened yeah. in 1993. Okay, more, moreover, Tara Reid says that she reported the assault to a member of uh, Biden's staff, Marianne Banker, the office manager in Biden's office at the time. Now, this is maybe what the New York Times is alluding to, that when contacted, Marianne Baker said, She's never heard of this. She never, she doesn't know that anything happened. But in an article in The Intercept, you know, Ryan Grimm, that Ryan Grimm wrote, he pointed out that, quote, for Baker's statement to be true, Reed would have had to have lied to her friend, brother, and mother about having complained to Biden's office. And there's no obvious reasons to that. Now, people will say the timing is bad. She's coming up with this in April of 2020. This is political. But that doesn't explain why at 1993 and before, she had made all of these statements contemporaneously or near contemporaneously to other people in her lives. And that's something that no one in the media really reckoned with or engaged with in any way. And I don't remember there being any pressure at all on Baker to look through, to do document requests, record requests, try to see if there's any actually evidence that can corroborate on, from, on the office's side what Tara Reid had been saying. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the excuses people in the mainstream media came up with in private conversations with me when I would ask people, why aren't you covering this? Why aren't you digging into this? Why don't you have the interest in this that you had about Christine Blasey Ford or a hundred other things? The excuses they came up with were so just flatly absurd and ridiculous. It was clear that it was inconvenient for Joe Biden and it was and, and it, it was a, a, a lack of willingness to cast aspersions on him at that point, um, even though there was still another, there was still someone running for the Democratic nomination yep. at the time who did not have sexual misconduct Correct. accusations against them. And again, I am not asserting whatsoever that this should be the standard that you get accused of anything, that's it, it's over for you. I think we went way too over our skis in, in due process, bad ways, and in like public you know, burn them at the stake kind of kind of views. But this was a standard the mainstream media wholly bought into for everyone else. And even if you don't, if you even put believe women to the side, you should at very least believe in investigating yes. claims that come up. Yes. That that should be the standard that you credit you you treat all of these claims as potentially credible. You investigate them and either mm -hmm. they are or they aren't. And in fact we can't memory hole that there were a number of people who accused Joe Biden of sexual misconduct at the beginning of his campaign. His own vice, now vice yeah. president, Kamala Harris, said that she believed Biden's accusers. People like Alyssa Milano, who were key members of the uh, Me Too movement, flipped on a, a, a head of a pen when it came to the accusations about mm -hmm. Joe Biden, immediately ran cover him. People uh, for, right. for him, people like um, Stacey Abrams were quartered right. on TV and made to say that they basically immediately, without having any opportunity to know anything about what happened, said that they believed Joe Biden. And watching this as a third party at the time was Incredible! It, I mean, was, it was incredible it was to Alyssa Milano's moment. former co-host uh, Rose McGowan, who who went ballistic about it. it. Was like, are you kidding me? Yep. This and, is. And in fact, Melissa Milano founded a podcast pro Joe, and her, had Joe Biden on as her first guest on her Me Too Times Up podcast in the midst yeah. of all of these allegations in the spring of 2020. It was disgusting. And to the extent that people did not believe that the Me Too movement was in good faith, I think that you know many people, it was in good faith. The people had experienced sexual assault and were so happy to be able to have space to uh, voice their com concerns. But the people who were, many figures who were running the movement, who ended up running cover for Joe Biden, really undermined the interests, legitimate mm -hmm. interests, of women and men who have been assaulted over time. And it did a horrible disservice to the things that they had experienced. Yeah. But I guess we're the idiots now that she's moved, now that Tara Reid has moved to Russia. Yeah. I guess I we mean, feel real bad about ourselves. And she's right. She is a whistleblower and she has been yes. threatened. And the, the media's response to her choice to move there, as maybe I think it's uh, uh, wise optically or overly mm -hmm. credulous of her safety in Russia and all of these other kinds of things, Absolutely. maybe she is being used as a pawn. But that's, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that her interests aren't also being served, even yeah. if she knows she's being used in some ways it, it by the Russian government. It just has nothing to do with the underlying accusation, right. which it, was never taken seriously it, by exactly. the mainstream media here. And you can exactly. see why someone would feel like, um, having gone through what she did, that it was not 
the situation here was not yeah. to her benefit. The, the way While to, still questioning that choice. Go way, ahead, question The way it. to discredit Tara Reid's claims is to investigate Tara Reid's yeah. claims in a fulsome way that has never been done to this date. Yeah. Instead, we're getting, uh, she's uh, in the pocket of yeah. Big Putin, but that doesn't go to the, the material issue. Real here. undeserving victory lap being taken there by yeah. mainstream mouthpieces, in my opinion. Uh, we'll have more rising right after this.